All right, now we're going to talk about the definition of the definite integral. And so the definition goes like this. So that f, um, a function f is said to be integrable on an interval from a to b, from a to b, if the limit, now notice this limit, the limit is the maximum of the delta x of k's go to zero. So the fattest of these delta x of k's, the fattest of the rectangles, the widest of the rectangles, goes to, it gets skinny. Okay, and what, all right, of the sum as k goes from 1 to n of f of x of k star, that's the height of the rectangle, times delta x of k, that's the width of the rectangle. So this gives us the area of the kth rectangle, and we're adding those k, those k rec, those rectangles up. All right, if, the, if that this limit exists, then we say the function is integral. When this is the case, when that limit exists, we use this symbol, notice the integral sign, from a to b of f of x dx is this limit. Now you want to be careful because this limit is the definition of the definite integral. All right, so if I ask you about the definition of the definite integral, we have that. So, so notice the definite integral of, is, is, is denoted by the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This is called the definite integral of f from a to b. The difference between definite integrals and indefinite integrals, and indefinite integrals will not have these limits of integration. All right, a, since it's on the bottom, is called the lower limit of integration. That's kind of when we start integrating. All right, b, as since it's at the top, is the upper limit of integration. f of x, inside of here, this f of x, is called the integrand, okay? And this expression, well, we've already seen, is called the Riemann sum. So I take the limit of the Riemann sum to get the definite integral. All right. So let's take a look at a couple examples. One thing we should be aware of this, and this is this is. Uh, let me just go back for a second. As I see this, we're going to have a slick way of evaluating this in in the next section. All right, but the problem is it's not very intuitive. All right, if we want to apply this definite integral to uh, to things other than area, then we're going to have to understand this part of it. Okay, we're going to have to understand this part of it, and this is, I, I think this part is used to set up the integral, and then this part we can use uh, the techniques from section 5.6 to compute the integral once, once we've set it up. Okay, so let's take a look. First of all, let's suppose that we have this limit as maximum delta x sub k goes to zero, sum of k goes from 1 to n of sine of x of k star times delta x of k with a is equal to 0 and b is equal to, to pi. All right, let's rewrite this using integral notation. Well, notice that this, basically we can think of this limit and this summation symbol being replaced by this symbol. Since it's a definite integral, we'll have to include the limits. This would be from 0 to pi. All right, that's of 0 to pi. And then inside here, I'm integrating this function. But notice in this integral notation, the sub k and the star drops off. So this is just the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x. And this delta x sub k is going to be dx in the when we're using integral notation. So this together is the integral, the integral notation. Um, sign, think of it that way. Think of this as, remember we got these, the sum and they had jagged edges and as we, as we took the limit it smoothed out the sum and this is kind of like a smoothed out S. That's, that's at least how, how I think of this notation. Let's take a look at another one. Let's suppose that we have this limit. The limit is maximum of delta T sub K is goes to zero of the sum as k goes from 1 to n of negative 32 t sub k squared plus v sub 0 times delta t sub k with a being 1 and b being 5. Well, this part here is the integral, all right, from all right, 1 to 5. And let's see. So that, that you could think about that as being this limit and the sum. And then this part, well, what happens is the star and the sub k drop off. So this is of negative 32t plus v0. 
all right? And then times delta, delta t sub k equals dt with respect to t. So there's another example of a definite integral. All right, now let's compute. All right, in, in some instances we can compute these. Suppose f of x is equal to 3. We'd like to compute the definite integral from 1 to 5 of f of x dx. So that's going to be f of x is 3, so that's going to be the definite integral from 1 to 5 of 3 dx. So what, what we're doing here is we're starting at 1, And we're ending at 5, and we're computing the area under the curve, but above the x-axis. So we're computing this area here. That's what that integral will do. So let's see, this is 4 wide and 3 high. So this integral from 1 to 5 of 3 dx is equal to 12. Okay, we'll look at a couple more examples like that in the next video.